Welcome back, Storm fans. I am Brian Cook, and today we're playing Mono Blue Initiative Combo, Initiative Lash, whatever you would like to call it. And this is a donation deck from our very good friend Garrett Yaki. Garrett has actually submitted the Thought Lash combo in the past. You can find one of these videos in the card above. There's a couple of them if you're really interested in more Thought Lash combo decks. But Garrett wanted to show off their creation. The idea is that you're going to use the initiative creatures that are blue. So you're very, if you follow Legacy, you're probably familiar with the white ones. Well, blue actually has a couple as well. You have the, uh, the sneak. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that first word. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm going to call it sneak. You have the sneak and then you have the Feywild, care, Feywild Caretaker. I can't talk this morning. Forgive me. But the idea here, and why would you play blue initiative when it's worse than white initiative, you're less aggressive, I get that. Well, this is actually kind of cool. So you get um, evasion with the blue ones. You get flying here, and then a 1-1 one, one blue flying creature here as well. So with Thought Lash, you get to prevent damage. So you can stop your opponents from ever taking back the initiative, which is really, really fascinating. On top of that, Thought Lash combos with Thassa's Oracle. The combo that you're most likely familiar with in this deck is Paradigm Shift paired with Thassa's Oracle to just win the game very, very quickly. So that is something that people are, you know, on the know about. Well, the way that this deck is constructed is that there's actually no one drops in the deck. So Chalice of the Void, as much as it breaks my heart, makes a lot of sense here. I'm going to be a dirty, filthy Chalice of the Void player for a league. Look what Garrett's doing to me. It's not very kind. On top of that, we get to play Force of Will, plus a other like other sweet cards. Like I love Malevolent Hermit. I've played this card a bunch of modern. It's super sweet. Uh Jace Fielder Mysteries, admittedly less sweet. There's only one of them, but it does provide you with a backup wing condition for Thought Lash or Paradigm Shift if for some reason Oracle doesn't get the job done. In the sideboard, we mostly have things to support our main deck. We have Flusterstorm for spell-based interaction, Dress Down for, I imagine, Doomsday and other initiative decks, Hercules Recall versus Stacks. I don't think you would actually board this in versus initiative. It's kind of narrow. In fact, I'd probably cut this if I were Garrett. I think that this card is a little bit of a trap. I would play Echoing Truth before I ever ran Hercules Recall. Brazen Borrower, more Bounce. I think I'd actually like to see more copies of Force of Negation. I think that's a card that makes a lot of sense here. You could do the Doomsday thing, which is just not let your opponent's spells resolve and not worry about answering them later. So I think four Force of Negation would make a lot of sense. Fairy Macabre Graveyard decks, and then Spellskite. These Fairy Macabres could also be Leyline of the Void, and I think that would probably be more impactful in those matchups. So I'd be interested in more Force of Negation and then Leyline of the Void personally, but Garrett went 5-0 with this deck last night. So maybe Garrett is more in tune with the deck than my initial impressions. Let's find out in the league. I hope you enjoyed this deck tech. Stick around. Maybe you'll even enjoy the video. See you in match number one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Let's begin. We are on the play. We have an oracle and we have a sneak. So this is turn to initiative creature. I'm in. This definitely feels a little bit more like a combo deck now. The opponent takes a mulligan to six. Now to five. We'll play the island and the pair of lotus petals. With my username being Bryant underscore Cook, people tend to just like blind chow zero me. If you're, you know, not named that, you could probably get away with holding these. You could have also played out the Seagate Restoration. My fear with this is that if we end up flooded, because when we enter the uh, the dungeon or whatever it's called, we go and get a basic. So in theory, I could hard cast this Seagate Restoration at some point. Hmm. I guess I should play this one. Okay. Pretty good. 
We have taken the initiative. We're now venturing into the Undercity. Go grab a basic. Pass the turn. <laughs> yes. And now we create a 1-1 one, one Fairy Dragon token. This is sweet. No one tell Garrett that I'm having this much fun playing Fairy Magic. Our opponent might be Reanimator. I'm not really sure. So here we are going to... Sorry, I want to make sure I'm clicking on the right thing. We want to forge. Let's put those counters here. Take a draw step. Chrome Mox. We, they know about the island, so let's play that out. Attack them for six. They go to 14. Ouch. We'll play the sneak. And now we go further into the Undercity. So we're going to trap them and they'll lose five life going down to nine. And we're representing lethal next turn, and they don't even know about our combo. We got another dragon, too. Love it. And we are getting no information on our opponent here. So we're going to draw an extra card with the Undercity. We draw Force of Will. We're definitely not showing them Jays. This actually only puts them to one. Pass the turn. Maybe them going to one is a benefit because they might give us a little bit more info. And we win! We're just an aggro deck. No big deal. No big deal. I think that they're on reanimator. If I had to take a wild guess, I'm going to bring in Fairy Macabre. Force of Negation. And Fluster. What do I want to take out versus reanimator? I think Malevolent Hermit's probably a, a touch too slow. We can get rid of that. Now we're at 63. The Jace Wielder and Mysteries can probably leave. We're still two cards over. I'm going to try boarding down to Seagate Restoration, which is a little bit weird. But it's also like just a land in our deck for the most part. Yes, it is a blue card. I boarded in an additional force. So having that matters a lot. And here we actually opened up on the combo. This is amazing. Okay, so we have force plus the combo. This is great. The mulligan we will keep. I don't even know what this is. Expedition map. Are you some sort of pox deck? Force of Will. We'll play the Surprise and Scary and pass the turn. Urborg. So it's definitely some sort of pox deck. Play the Cavern. We'll name Wizard. Pass the turn. We're going to use the Expedition map here. That's fine. You might be thinking, why not Paradigm Shift now? Well, if I shift now, I'm going to deck myself on my turn. So... Not being able to draw cards is kind of a, a big downside, so you don't really want to make that play. There's a Saga. Welcome to the party. Liliana. Guess we'll force pitching force. No, I'll get rid of the Thought Lash. We don't need that. I could have also hardcast Force and Negation. My fear with that is I have to tap the Scary for mana, and then it would die. What? I guess I could have cast it off this. Never mind. We were fine no matter what I did. All right, so we'll tap these. Play the shift. So we exchange our graveyard with our library, which means that we only have one card in our deck now, which is the known force of will. And now we play Thassa's Oracle and win the game, assuming our opponent doesn't have removal but even if they did like let's say they have a snuff out i have force of will we'll put force of will back on top and that is the first match we are one and oh with mono blue initiative combo moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a magic deck online they support over 30 formats including legacy and many other eternal formats there are so many options to view decks the way that you want from text view to individual cards mana value and even card price there's also light mode and dark mode my personal favorite feature is card tags this way you can sort cards by function moxfield supports collection tracking scryfall search deckless feedback and so much more follow me on moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks we are back for the second match. We're facing Aaron Relentless, who is a former DNT expert who now plays a lot of elves, but they could be on anything. They're just really well-rounded player. Uh, I don't think we can afford to keep this hand. We're going to take a mulligan. This hand is kind of bananas. So we have an accelerated initiative creature, or we have the paradigm shift combo. I wonder if I'm supposed to 
No. Hmm, this is actually a tough call. I think I'm gonna bottom the Chromox. Let's go! Burning Catacombs and they're passing. Take a draw, Basic Island. Let's play the Surprise and Scary. On turn two, I can play the Sneak, and then on turn three, I can win the game. Assuming that Aaron Relentless is, in fact, on Elves. That's a Dryad Arbor. Nettle Sentinel. So Aaron Relentless is on Combo Elves. The Cradle taps for two mana. That's an Elvish Visionary. So the downside here is that on turn two, I have four mana, which is the correct mana count you need to Paradigm Shift plus Thassa's Oracle. So if I had kept the Chrome Mox, we might have been able to win here. Hmm. That's disappointing. Yeah, maybe I didn't think this through because we had a turn to win. I'm going to have to pray to be able to untap. This is my own fault. I think that I punted here. We'll venture into the under Undercity. Why did I bottom that Chrome Mox? Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Oh, we're dead. We are very, very dead. Glimpse in nature. Wooded foothills. Picks up a Dryad Arbor. Four mana. Once upon a time. That's a weird play after a Glimpse in nature. They find the Heritage Druid, though. That was an amazing hit. Because that allows them to make a bunch of mana. They've probably got me from here. Elvish Visionary, so they draw two, and they untap the Nettle Sentinel. So the Nettle Sentinel essentially represents a green mana for every spell they play. Come on, what, what could happen if you just pass the turn here? Pass the turn. Pass the turn. They besage you my Ancient Tomb. I'm down with that. Grab a basic. I can't believe this, we're getting to untap here. We'll forge for the counters here. Draw. So we want to paradigm shift first and then Oracle. Can't believe this. I didn't get punished for my Chromox misplay. And we got game number one against elves. Yes. Love to see it. Love to see it. Okay. We probably want dress down in this matchup. Get rid of the malevolent hermit. That's a pretty nice uh, clean board swap there. Maybe even board in the Brazen Borrowers, but I'm not sure if those are cards we want. Is Brazen Borrower better than Jace Wielder of Mysteries? Probably. So I think that's an easy switch. I'm going to submit this. There's a chance we want the other Brazen Borrower. I'm just not sure what I'm supposed to board out. You could board out like a Seagate Restoration or even just a land. You could board out like a Cavern of Souls, I guess. So here we have Shift and... We're one mana short of a turn two caretaker. I think I'm in. I think that this hand is fine enough. Like, hopefully the chalice does some damage. Upon a time. Burian Ranger. Metal Sentinel. Okay. Take a draw. It's another caretaker. Ancient Tomb. Ouch. Chalice of the Void for one. Pass the turn. The Nettle Sentinel will get in, will fall to 16. Ah, uh, they had the Shepherd. That's disappointing. So the Shepherd says spells can't be countered, or green spells can't be countered. Chalice of the Void is a counter trigger. So even though it's not a blue spell, still the Elsor Shepherd allows them to play through. We find another Chalice of the Void. Hmm. I think we're just supposed to play our Seagate tapped and pass the turn. I could Chalice of the Void for one again, but that it's not a meaningful thing. And if I Chalice two, I'm actually making my own job tougher. I think if they didn't have the Shepherd, this hand would have been a lot better. I'm not saying we're out of this yet, but it's not looking good. Elvish Visionary. They didn't play a land, and now they're going to combat. That might be a good sign for me. We're at 13. They do have a land. It's not Cradle. Bayou. Aquarian Ranger, sure thing. So they could pick up a land and untap the Dryad Arbor if they want. Another Chrome Mox. So I can play the Caretaker here, but I'd have to imprint the Paradigm Shift. Part of me wonders if I should just be on the Prey to Draw Thassa's Oracle train rather than... I guess I could imprint the Caretaker. They would take the initiative, they would get a land... 
All right, I guess I talked myself into playing the caretaker here. I understand that they're likely going to steal initiative. The Osora Shepherd just stole this game. Okay, so we will venture, go grab an island, pass the turn, and we'll get a dragon on our end step. Or a fairy dragon, whatever. They have the cradle, so I think that puts me down on board. So even if I blocked, hypothetically, there and there, they would pump, they would pump, yeah, we're dead. Okay, game three. What was our top card? Bot Lash. They would have bought us some time. I'm going to just resubmit. I don't think we need to change anything. There's some discussion to be had about siding out the fourth Force of Will for Brazen Borrower versus the Outsource uh, Shepherd deck, but I think we probably have the correct configuration already. Game three versus Elves, we're on the play. We have Shift, we have Turn 1 Chalice. We draw a land, we can turn to Initiative Creature, but if we don't, kind of sets us back. I'm going to keep. I think I'm actually going to imprint the shift and not the borrower, though. Our opponent's kept six cards, and let's go. Island, play Chrome Mox. We will imprint the Paradigm Shift and cast this awful atrocity of a magic card, Chalice of the Void. Pass the turn. They play a Once Upon a Time. We are really begging here to draw a land. All right, no Shepherd this time. Draw. That does it. So we'll play Chrome Mox and print the Borrower. Lotus Petal. And then play the... I believe it's like Aserok Sneak. Or, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert here, but I think I've heard it called that in like another person's video. Alright, so we go get a basic island. Play the island. Pass the turn. Cradle. Okay. Here I think we want... Forge. Force of Will. Cannot cast that at the moment. Get in. I am the beatdown. Bayou. Elvish Visionary. Alright, so we're going to trap them. They'll lose 5 life. They go to 12. And we take a draw. Paradigm Shift. So this does allow me to cast Force of Will now. That's certainly a plus. Get in. So there's some argument here to holding back and making sure that they can't steal the initiative back from me, but I can just take it back on my turn. So they can attack, they can take the initiative, they, they'll they get a basic land and have three mana available. Okay. So they have stolen the initiative. And like I said, they will be able to get a basic here. Apparently, oh no, they, okay, there was another. I thought it was a missed trigger for a moment. Three mana. They're going to play a morph. I mean, I know what the morph is. It's the um, Birch Floor Rangers. I just don't know if this is worth forcing. I'm going to let this happen. We'll draw. We do not have the initiative. Let's swing with the Aserac Sneak, or whatever I'm going to call it. And then we will take the initiative back and draw a card. We drew Seagate Restoration. I have to pass here. So their Cradle now taps for two. They're swinging in for three. I'll go to 16. They will steal the trap. I'm sorry, they will steal the initiative. And then they have to choose between Forge or Lost Well. But I feel like they might Lost Well here because they're not going to race me. And they do Lost Well. One on top, one on the bottom. They play a land. They have six cards in hand and six available mana. They're passing back. Draw for turn. It's Oracle. That does it. Let's attack with the sneak first. Get in there. So we will steal the initiative back, and we actually get to go to the final room of the dungeon, Throne of the Dead 3. We get to look at the top 10, I believe, uh, of our deck and put a creature onto the battlefield. We get another sneak. We will take the initiative. So now we venture back into the dungeon, and we go get a basic. Post combat, we'll play that basic paradigm shift. Boss's Oracle. We did it. We're 2 0. Oh. Garrett Yaki, I think you've created a pretty good deck here. Let's see if we can get the last three.
Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Let's go. Third match, we're on the play again. We have Chalice of the Void. We have no acceleration. Mulligan. We can do better. This hand just doesn't, like, two mana and then it kind of craps out. I think we're going to go to five here. Five cards incoming. What are lands? Okay, I think we're supposed to hide the initiative stuff. Ooh, here's a sweet play. It involves our opponent not interacting with us. But I think what happens here is... Okay, I'm pretty sure this works. We're going to play Chromox. Imprint the Force of Will. Play Lotus Petal. And now we'll Paradigm Shift. This guarantees that I draw Shift Oracle, or Lotus Petal... And then I can cast Oracle on my turn. So if our opponent cannot interact, we win the game. So if they're on like, I don't know, death and taxes, we win. Or elves. The opponent concedes! Yes! Boom! Love it. Alright, I think we're supposed to just resubmit. Our deck is already configured to the ideal setup versus an unknown opponent. So why try to guess what our opponent's playing when... Our deck is already in the ideal configuration for that. So we'll play game two the same way. And if we don't win game two, we can always make adjustments for the third game. Game two, we've opened up another weird hand where our hand doesn't actually function. We're going to mulligan. Okay, this seems fine. We'll keep, get rid of the Seagate restoration. Let's go. Ooh, okay. That might've been a, no, I guess the caretaker gets me an island. Are you on lands? Yeah, they're on lands. Ancient tomb. Torp or orb? Okay, uh, we literally can't beat a torp orb. I'm going to go to game three. <laughs> but now we know what we're facing. Okay, so we probably want... Oh my, is Garrett a genius? I was talking crap about Hercules Recall, and now we're boarding it in? Probably want this Force of Negation. I mean, I still think Aquarian Truth is better than Hercules Recall, if I'm being completely honest with you. But it is a useful card here. Once again, we'll take the Hermits out. So now we're at 62 cards. The Jace Wheeler of Mysteries is an easy board out. And then I'm going to take out a Cavern of Souls. Well, I guess they could be a Pyroblast. Like, Pyroblast isn't unreasonable out of land. Hmm... All right, fine. I'll board out one C8. Let's hit submit. You could be saying, like, what about Fairy Macabre for Life from the Loam? I think you're trying to fight the matchup the wrong way if that's your uh, your approach. This is unkeepable. We have to mulligan. Just, we don't have the fourth mana, and it's too slow. Ay ay ay. Is this even good enough? They've kept seven. I'm going to keep it, but I am not happy about this. We'll... Bottom the cavern. Play a turn one scary and pass the turn. I really need to draw like a lotus petal in particular because that would allow me to keep the blue card for force. Torpor orb, I'm going to force this. Okay, so torp orb counter. Unfortunately, I have to pass here. Wasteland sets me back to the Stone Age. Need to hope that they don't have it. Taiga. Dryad of the Elysian Grove. No! Brutal. Oh, that was devastating. Play the island, we have to pass. They play another Ancient Tomb. Trenosphere. So I guess I get punished for not playing out the Chrome Mox. Come on, Ancient Tomb. I'll take that. Pass the turn. Now they have me under Waste Lock. This is brutal. I think we're probably just done at this point. Ancient Tomb? I'm going to call it. We're not going to win this. That's disappointing. What a bummer. 
We are now two and one. Yeah, two and one. Two matches left. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Let's try to recover after that brutal loss there. We're on the draw. We've opened up a hand that doesn't really play magic. We're going to ship it. Hmm. So if we draw an oracle or an initiative creature, this hand does something. I don't know if you're supposed to keep this or not. I think I'm going to, but I'm not happy about it. Cavern of Souls. We chose Cleric. Cephalid Breakfast? I think I want to keep the Seagate in hand now. I was going to play this out, but now I think I want to hold it onto it for the Force of Well. Oh, it's just initiative. Yep. Cannot force a will this because it is in fact a cleric and they have a cavern of souls in play. Okay. We draw chrome mox. So I can accelerate into thought lash here. We'll name wizard. Play out chrome mox. We'll imprint the seagate. Or actually, maybe I should imprint the force. Because the Seagate is mana for an initiative creature if I draw one. Okay. Thought Lash. So they're going to venture into the Undercity. Well, further into the Undercity. So we're going to prevent five damage with this Thought Lash. There looks like they're attacking with the White Plume here. All right. So we need to activate this five times. So that was one, two, three, four. And five. We re exiled one initiative creature and one Thassa's Oracle, which is kind of a bummer here. Guess I have to manually click on those, which is kind of a pain in the butt. They play a Chrome Mox. They're exiling the, the touch, which is interesting because they could have exiled my Thought Lash and didn't. Alice Jailer. Okay. The Monarch is different from the Undercity. Come on, Thassa's Oracle off the top, please. Auto yield to this. Auto yield. Yes. We exile an island. Come on, Thassa's Oracle. Nope. Player land. We have to pass the turn. The initiative will happen. They're going to forge and make us lose five. Which, if you're... Watching, you're like, Brian, can you have taken a hit from the White Plume Adventure? I'm trying to keep my life total high so that if this game goes long, I don't lose to multiple copies of Forge. Or, I'm sorry, multiple copies of Trap. They swing for seven. Let's prevent some damage. The so three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. I wish there was a better way of doing that. Elite Spellbinder. Joke's on you. My hand stinks. Okay. They draw a card due to the Monarch. Once again, Duck, I'm asking you for Thassa's Oracle. I can't cast this. I'm a mana short. We have to pass. So they get to draw a card with the Archives. And now we need to prevent 10 damage. One... Two, three. I'm going to stop counting out. On the fifth exile, we remove the Jace Fielder of Mysteries. So that leaves three draws that we want in our deck. Okay, so I believe that should cover all of them. We still have three copies of Oracle in our deck that win the game if we can draw it. Another Elite Spellbinder. So now they can take away our Caretaker. A touch of the spirit realm, their own creature. It's so odd, you could just exile my thought lash. Unless I'm reading this card wrong. Artifact or creature. Okay, that would make more sense. Reading is tough. It's not just oblivion ring. Okay. The more you know. So we want to say yes. Ooh, we hit an oracle. Now we only have two oracles left in our deck. Take a draw. Another thought lash. I guess we'll play it past the turn. 
I'm going to have to be incredibly lucky in order to win that. They play an ancient tomb, and now they're going to combat. So they have eight. So this is eight damage plus 11, so 19. I'm going to have two cards left in deck. Uh-oh. I guess maybe I shouldn't prevent all the damage. I do need to prevent some of it to stay alive, though. So that's three, four, five. I want to prevent enough so that I don't die too four or trap it. I guess that's the thing. Ooh, I hit an oracle. So now I have one oracle left in the deck. Okay. I don't know what to do here. So I have 10 cards left. There's one oracle. We only need to do a couple more, I guess. Ancient tomb. Bowash again. There's a shift. I'm going to stop there. All right, so now I'm at eight and I don't die to trap. Walking Ballista for three. Okay. All right, deck. So they untap with the White Plume. Which one is this for? I'm going to say no to exiling four cards. Oh, I forgot about it exiling my entire deck on the leaf trigger. Oh. I completely forgot about that. So let's see the top four. And my top card was Oracle, so it didn't matter. Damn. Okay. I mean, it's a good thing to remember this now in a game where it, I would have lost anyway, rather than a game where I could have theoretically won it had I played better. In this matchup, I don't think we want Force of Will. I don't think we want Chalice of the Void. I don't think we want Malevolent Hermit. So those are cards we're not interested in. Brazen Borrower seems fine. Dressed on seem okay. Maybe the spell skites for like sorts to plowshares or solitudes. And that leaves me at 56. I think we just board back in the Force of Wills and accept that they have Cavernous Soul. Game number two, we're on the play. We have the Oracle combo. I think I'm going to keep this. It's a little slow, but I think we can get away with it. We'll start off by playing the Seagate. No, I will not like to lightning bolt myself past the turn. Ancient Tomb, Lotus Petal. And they're passing. We hit a Lotus Petal. So I can do the same thing I did in the previous game, which is hide my or Petal Shift. And that even means that I can be a... Actually, I could just Thought Lash here. Tough call. So if I play the Oracle... Or if I play the shift and they play their whatever it's called, the elite spellbinder, I can still cast Oracle and pay the tax. Okay. Let's shift. Because if they somehow destroyed the Thought Lash, I don't want to lose the game. Pass the turn. Passing back to our opponent. Tavern of Souls. Once again, they choose Cleric. That's a white plume adventure. You got it. The adventure on taps and we draw our lotus petal. Boss's oracle. Solitude and swords would not save them. Game three coming up. I'm just going to resubmit. What does our hand really do? I'm going to be disciplined and take a mulligan here. This isn't any better. I'm going to go to five. This hand stinks. We'll go to four. I think I'm bullied into keeping this hand that is not very good. Bottom the dress down. Get rid of an ancient tomb. Goodbye, Seagate. Ancient tomb is their start. Well, we don't have any zeros in our hand. That's fine. Let's play an ancient tomb. Pass the turn. They have a cavern. They name Hume. Elite Spellbinder. So they do hit my Oracle here. That's unfortunate. We draw the sneak, which is pretty good. We have to wait a turn to play it, though. They have another ancient tomb. They get in. No initiative for them. At least not yet. Chalice for two. Okay. We can still win the game. Tavern of Souls will say wizard. Ouch. Play the sneak. It triggers. A solitude here would just be brutal. Because I can't force of will. And we have to pass the turn. 
Are we able to out initiative the initiative deck? I hope so. Lauren of the Third Path. Okay. It is pretty good against our Thassa's Oracle deck. So we're going to go a little bit deeper into the Undercity. Let's forge. Take a draw. Dress down. That can't be cast due to the Chells of the Void. So we're going to tap this for Wizard Mana. And play our Oracle to Scry 3, essentially. I forgot about paying the tax, but we have mana to do so. So the Chalice of the Void will trigger, but it doesn't counter anything. And now we get to look at the top three. It's not actual Scry, it is different. Let's put the other initiative creature on top. And I'm going to just pass here. I don't want them to gain the initiative. Because I don't know if them getting a Plains is a meaningful thing here, and I'd like to stop that from happening. Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. Cannot be countered by the Chalice of the Void or my Force of Will. Okay, so we will trap them. They go to five. And we will attack with our Sneak. Very, very sneaky. They have to block or else they... Ooh, okay. Or else they can't use their Ancient Tomb anymore. But they are not concerned with that. We'll use Wizard Mana here so it's uncounterable. Player Caretaker. So it making the flying creature here is actually very relevant because it gives us three blockers. We'll draw a card. I guess we'll play the Ancient Tomb. And we'll go to the end step and get that Fairy Dragon. They're going to have us each draw a card. We draw a useless Chrome Box. Our opponent says GG's. GG's to our opponent. We out initiated. Initiated? What are words? Anyway, we did it. We beat them in the initiative mirror, which is pretty cool. The fifth and final round will be coming up in just a moment. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pinned comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round, we are facing Elves Master Jack Kendall. Jack does have a lot of range and sometimes plays different decks, so we're not sure that Jack is on Elves. But it doesn't really matter if Jack is or not, because this hand is just terrible. We can't afford to keep this. So this is a turn three sneak. I think I'll try this from Bottom the Hermit. Blooded Strand. It certainly looks like Elves. Okay. Atawara, ouch, Chalice of the Void, picks up a very nice looking Tundra, Brainstorm, I don't think I've ever seen this before, I dig it, Chalice on the stack, it meets its maker with a force of will, pitching force, okay, so Jack is left with three cards in hand, draws and goes up to four, Wasteland, interesting, Maybe it's a Stoneblade deck. We'll play the Surprise and Scary and pass the turn. Scalding Tarn. Still those three cards in hand, and now Jack is drawn through the Brainstorm. We will imprint a Paradigm Shift to this Chromox and play a Sneak. Okay. Sneak Attack. Not literally. It is not the four mana red enchantment. But we have taken the initiative. And I've been stifled. I, I took zero initiative. Stifle a pretty good card against the deck we're trying to play here. I can always bounce my sneak and then recast it. Brainstorm again. It's going to be tough though because this scary only gets one more activation. They use Scalding Tarn for another Tundra. Thunder. They have three in hand. Draw. Chalice of the Void. Let's try Chalice for one again. That resolves. I'm going to hold on to the Atawara. I don't think playing it out as a land is a meaningful thing at the moment. And they are, in fact, a Stoneforge Mystic deck. They pick up a Cauldra. We hit another Scary. Pass the turn. I think the plan here is to bounce the Germ Token. They put an equipment from their hand onto the battlefield. It is, in fact, the Cauldra. 
Tap the scary. Now we want to bounce the germ. Please. It looks reversed here. I really want to bounce the germ. Okay. That is not great UI. Force of will. Get in there. Two mana. They want to blow up my chalice. I think I'm willing to fight over this. Force of will pitching the second copy of Paradigm Shift. They have four cards in hand. We draw another Force of Will. Attack. Two mana. Looks like another copy of Prismatic Ending, and it is. That's a bummer. We're just trading one point of damage right now. Try another Chalice. Get in. Wasteland, that hurts. True name Nemesis, yeah. That is particularly brutal. I need to draw another sneak here if I want to win this, I think. Because my window's closing. Damn. Okay, get in for one. So now they're attacking for four. I'm going to go to ten. They have to wasteland here. Really? No, another true name. That would make sense. We're going to force this one. Come on, deck, please give me a sneak. Maybe I'm supposed to hold back? I don't know. I feel like our draws this game were not particularly good. I go to six. Draw for turn. Way too late. Let's go to game two. We're facing Stoneblade. I feel like the Brazen Borrowers are going to be pretty good. Velskite can protect from removal and Prismatic Ending Clearing Chalice. Dress down does stop Stoneforge, but I don't know how good that actually is. Like, it can also stop True Name from naming you, I believe, but I don't really feel like that's what the matchup is about. I'm definitely getting rid of this chance. We're at 63 cards. My gut tells me to board out Hermit. I feel like it's just, like, not great. Like, in fact, this might be the weakest card in the deck, and I actually like Malevolent Hermit. But three mana versus the Stifle Wasteland deck that also has a bunch of removal might be a tall ass. Yeah, I'm sorry. Goodbye, Hermit. Game two, match five, we're on the play. Unfortunately, this hand is poop. This hand doesn't actually do anything either. We're going to five. Come on. I think we keep this and we just bottom the pair of oracles. We just have to try to ride this to victory. Pass. Flooded Strand. Ponder. Seagate. Doesn't really help me a whole bunch. We'll just play Island and pass. Golding Tarn for a Volcanic. That's the Stoneforge. So our, I think our best draw is actually Chromox here, which seems wild. But if I draw Chromox, I can imprint Seagate, play Lotus Petal, Cavern Soul on Wizard, play Caretaker, and they can't force a will it. They pick up Batter Skull, so they must already have the, uh, the Cauldra in hand. That also does it. So we'll play Lotus Petal. Play Lotus Petal. Cavern of Souls. We'll name Wizard. Make a Wizard mana. Play the Caretaker. We take the initiative. Go get a basic. Then on the end step, we'll get a dragon. These swords are Caretaker. If they have a blue blast here, they can kill my dragon. Or a bolt. And now they're going to take the initiative. So I think we probably just lost. Yep. I play an island. Aye, aye, aye. We have to pass. Wasteland is brutal. And now they're passing. I'll try a Chalice of the Void. They brainstorm in response. It resolved, but if it resolves, I mean, I mean they have to have something. So I guess that they have a prismatic ending. Incoming Batter Skull or Cauldra. But if they had a Cauldra, I think that they would have put it into play already. So weird that they elected to have Batter Skull as their target instead of Cauldra then. Maybe they did a board swap. Maybe one of them lives in the sideboard and one is main. I'm not really sure. I haven't seen these lists before. And there's the Prismatic Ending. Surprise, surprise. And another Ponder. They get in for five. We go to 17. I'm likely going to pick it up soon. Like, we're just so far behind. Yeah, okay. So you might be saying, Bryant, you could just draw um, Paradigm Shift. 
we have three cards in graveyard so even if i draw shift oracle doesn't win and i need them to not kill the oracle like it's just way too much to ask here so we want three two it's not the worst let's open up our pity chest we got two cards i've never seen before uh, i have to imagine that this is a dud so the deck itself I was not impressed by Malevolent Hermit and Jace Wielder of Mysteries. I think that those four, the, the, the total four cards should probably leave the deck. And I think what you want is just some consistency cards. So I'm not talking about Preordain or Brainstorm. I think you want something that works with your plan. So it's something that has to go with Chalice of the Void. So it's probably a two mana spell. I don't really have any suggestions off the top of my head. Like Impulse is a card you could play, but I feel like there's probably something better. In the sideboard, I would like to see the full set of Force of Negation and then Leyline of the Void. I just think that the current build here is lacking a little bit, uh, but I am happy with a 3-2. I think that this deck has a lot of potential to be very, very good. Another thought that I have is, is it possible that this wants to be a City of Traders deck? I know it's tough with Thassa's Oracle being blue-blue. Same thing with Thalash. Maybe we just want four copies of Surprise and Scary, but... It was tough opening up hands with a bunch of initiative creatures and then two mana. So like an island and a cavern of souls, like those are not key. So I think you at least need to maximize your surprise and scaries. And then you can begin to think about city of traders. Seagate restoration was a little bit stinky. These could also be actual land slots for city of traders or something along those lines. But uh, that's what I've got. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Garrett, for the donation doc. I hope you enjoyed this video in particular. And uh, everyone, have a great day. Keep storming. Happy New Year. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.